Good morning. So we're going to get started with this awesome panel. <laughs> um, so I've already introduced myself. I'd like to introduce Michelle Jones. Michelle, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Michelle Jones. I'm the president of Creative8, which is a marketing company focused on ROI inbound marketing. So I love getting leads and I love turning them and nurturing them into customers. Um, I stumbled into roofing by accident. That's one of my favorite questions to ask people is how did you end up in roofing? Um, I actually might be the last uh, millennial to get a job by a classified ad um, <laughs> for FiberTite. So I was the head of marketing for FiberTite for about six years. Fell in love with roofing. Never in a million years thought that roofing would be my home, but I tried to boomerang out and here I am back in again. I can't help it. I love it. Um, so I've been uh, on my, and my, my company's been going on for the last two years. I've known Heidi now for quite a few um, and really excited to be here today and talk about bringing some of the things I've learned from clients with really big budgets um, and bring it to small and medium sized businesses to help them grow. So that's my passion in life and I'm excited to be here today. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Sarah. Yeah. So hi, I'm Sarah Allen. I'm with Ruby and we are the live virtual receptionist and chat provider for small businesses. So it's really all about creating that, that personal engagement over the phone and making sure that you never miss a call. And I love it. I actually came from the trucking industry before this, before coming to Ruby. Um, and so I came from a very different industry, so I'm super excited to learn about roofing and get to know this industry because it feels like just amazing people and an awesome opportunity to, to share with you about just communications and the importance of that, obviously. Um, in your business, so I'm really excited to be here. And Sarah is local, Portland, right? Yeah, Portland, Georgia. yeah. So, exactly. um, Megan. Hi, I'm Megan Ellsworth, and I work for the Rufus Coffee Shop. I'm the podcast producer and um, media manager, and um, yeah, I do all things audio and podcast, and I'm happy to be here talking with you all. all right, so now you got an idea. We're gonna talk about a couple things on new digital ideas. Oh, so sorry, my clicker doesn't work. So what we would like is to have this to be interactive. So we'd like you to ask questions. I was like, did it go all the way to the end where the question slide? <laughs> um, so, but we, we put this here on purpose because we want to do it as we go along. So if you have questions, just shout them out. Um, we, we actually have some prizes that we might be handing out for certain people as we, um, as you ask questions too. So. Our first thing is, is your business ready for the right marketing? This is super important because, you know, one of the things I didn't say is I actually started an agency. I had my own agency way back in the day, 2000 or 1998, and worked with contractors, worked with Interstate Roofing out of Portland, worked with, if you remember, Jorby um, from Seattle, um, did a lot of things there. And one of the things that I learned working much like Michelle with large companies and very small companies is if you're not ready for your marketing, if your sales team isn't ready, if you don't have customer service, who's answering the phones, those kind of things, then you really need to pull back from spending a lot of money on marketing and make sure you have the infrastructure put together first. So we want to talk about that. Yeah, so it's really one of those things that you're obviously wanting to get a lot of leads. You're wanting to do a lot of marketing to do that, and that's what we're talking about today. But if you don't have people to actually answer the phone when you create that marketing, you're wasting your dollars. So you're going to go out and you're going to get that wonderful website and you're going to get a lot of those folks coming in, whether it's through social channels or content or all of those things, and you're spending a lot of money to do that. And then if no one's actually there to actually capture those leads through your website, through chat, or actually answer those phones, then it's, it's just a, a loss of money. So you want to make sure that you have that foundation in place. And so it's looking at, first, are you ready to do that marketing? Because do you have the support in place? So that when those leads come flowing in, because you want that increased call volume, are there people to actually answer those phones? So you want to have that support structure in place because that's kind of foundational in just making sure that you're organizationally ready um, to accept those new leads. So that's so kind of- So you've had the same experience. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. And, and I think too about marketing sometimes is a symptom. It's not the problem. So if so, I've heard people say before, my marketing isn't working. Well, a lot of times the marketing is working great. It's the internal processes aren't set up to handle it. Um, the Sometimes the messaging's off or stuff like that, but you may not be in the right, uh, your, your salespeople may not be calling people back, for example, or the customer service reps are having a bad day and being short with people and then people get a bad experience. So it's so, like your brand is so much more than just marketing. Every single person in your company is a representation of your brand and everyone has to be marching in the same order. Yeah. So that way when you do turn up your marketing, 
everyone's ready and able to assist with the effort and make it the most effective it possibly can be. And that internal communications too, of what, yes. are, what are we doing, what's the marketing campaign right now that we're working on, is everyone in the know of what's happening, mm -hmm. so that you're kind of ready to accept those leads and everything's in place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so funny important. story, when um, I was with Eagle View, I, I think Tracy might have been there at this time, we had this great marketing campaign and we put it all together and we put the promos out and we realized after we launched it that we had not told customer service about it. <laughs> customer, <laughs> customer yeah. service was getting the phone calls and they're like, what's going on? What promo code? What's happening? So there's, I mean, that was pretty far down the line. but. That's what can happen to your business if your front office and doesn't understand or can't get the um, information out because the marketing is already way ahead of your internal infrastructure. And yeah. uh, Megan, just real quick, social media. So this is Megan does social media um, for Rufus Coffee Shop and for her own businesses. And if you don't have the right, we've been there, right, with Rufus Coffee Shops. Like, what's the right messaging? What's the right? Do we have photos? What do people care about? Maybe talk about that for just a second. Yeah, I think one thing that happened a lot with Rufus Coffee Shop um, was we were saying no to newer technologies and um, newer platforms, and that was not serving us. Um, so I think keeping an open mind to, you know, the silly things like TikTok or Instagram <laughs> is really going to help because you're gonna reach an audience that you didn't even think you could reach. Um, new homeowners that are young, like 20 somethings. And I think, um, yeah, just keeping an open mind is really important, especially when it comes to marketing and especially when it comes to social media. And I was the one with the closed mind. Just so you know, I was like, TikTok? <laughs> Nobody in roofing does TikTok. Well, I was totally wrong. So um, it, listening to your company and making sure everybody's on going the same path Super critical. Can I jump um, in with one more thing yes. on social media? Yes. I get the question all the time, well, how do I know which social media platforms I should be on? Mm -hmm. Where people will say, oh, I'm on this platform because I feel like I should be there. If you back it up and you say, where's my target audience hanging out? Mm -hmm. Like if, if you're finding that most of your, you mentioned like the younger demographic of homeowners are coming in, where are they hanging out? Why would you be spending your time and energy on a platform that they're not on? You want to be where your target persona is. So if you're finding your demographics not hanging out on Facebook, then don't put stuff up on Facebook. Go over to TikTok or Insta and, or something like that. And yeah. that's where people are getting ed their education. I feel like yeah. people are out there, that, that's where they go to learn about you know, roofing or to figure out what do I need to do with my house? Where do I go? And they go to social media, and yeah. that's kind of where they go first to ask yeah, those Google. questions and kind of yeah, Google. right, yeah. yeah, right after Google, they're like, oh, let's let's learn a little bit more about that. Let's yeah. go yeah. to YouTube. But if you're making TikToks about um, why is my roof leaky? How can I fix that? Who do I call? And if someone mm -hmm. is googling why is my roof leaking? Who do I call? That TikTok will pop up, yeah. and they'll say, oh, there's this roofing contractor on TikTok um, teaching me how to fix my roof or telling me, don't fix your roof, that's dangerous, call me. Yeah. <laughs> so. And Megan runs and works on Ask a Roofer, which is a website with Roofer's Coffee Shop, and it is all for homeowners and building owners. So we see these questions, and we see the people doing the research that's coming through, um, and they are. The other thing is, too, I agree 100% know your audience, but also know the evolution of your audience. Mm -hmm. Because for many of you, how many have, um, Gen Z's, like in the 20s, kids, right? Okay, how much have you learned from them, right? They've, nothing? <laughs> <laughs> everything. I know, I've learned every. I mean, my, at 31 and 25, 24, and um, they've taught me how to do things different, right? So even if you think, oh wait, my, my audience are Gen Xers, or you know, more things, their kids are teaching them how to do different things. So don't always think that. So the other big question we have all the time when it comes to being efficient with your marketing is what do I pay for and what do I not pay for? First thing I'm gonna always say is talk to people who know roofing. So when we look at all of these things, websites, pay-per-click, anything like that, SEO, I mean, how many people get like 10 million emails or LinkedIn notes or anything about I can get you all these leads and I get all the SEO, right? And I'm not even a roofer and I get these. Yeah, I get yeah. It's really annoying. It's really annoying. It's so annoying. You don't want to spend all your money up front training somebody or teaching them about roofing. There are really talented, great folks out there who have businesses that already understand roofing. 
and who focus in it and are part of that industry and part of that community. So, Michelle, you run into this all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah what, quite a bit. How do you work with your customers to figure out what they should be paying for, who they should be working with? Yeah, so I think the first thing is, what are your goals? So if you take a look at your goals for your company, is it to grow your business? Is it, do you have top line sales goals? Is it to improve your brand reputation? Mm -hmm. Maybe there was something that went around in the community and it wasn't so great. But I think part of it is just being really realistic and honest with yourself about where your company is. If you're saying your customer service is great, but your Google reviews say otherwise, mm, time to take a hard look at that and see where you need to spend your, your time and energy. So, um, and there's things now like reputation management that didn't exist even you know five, 10 years ago. I mean, it's always changing. So a lot of it is looking at your goals and then picking the right strategies to align with those goals and help to get you there. And so what time? Yeah. yeah. When you mention social media, you keep speaking on Instagram and TikTok and you don't mention much of Facebook. <laughs> is there a reason for that that you steer towards those two more so than another? <laughs> um, Facebook's dead. I think. No, it's not. I would say no. I would, I would disagree no, with not. that. Especially, no, and not. also from personal experience, I recently, I recently did home service you know, projects in my house, and I went straight, straight to Facebook. I went to all the community groups, yeah. and I, that's where I went first. I was like, I'm looking for someone to do my bathroom. Who should I contact? And then people just, and it was great, because that was how I got people to call. Like, I didn't go to Google, I went there, because I, I'm about referrals, I love referrals. I feel like that is huge for this business, and so that's, I feel like, I go to Facebook for that. But price, this is a great example, right? Like, it's a generation, right? I mean, we're like, we're in two different generations, We're in different right? generations, right? yeah. so. Like, so. I'm like, Facebook's not dead, I use it every day, and she's like, no, I wouldn't touch that thing with a 10-foot pole. Right. Yeah. You know, so it just, it just depends on who you're going after and where you want to go yeah. after them. So True. if you think about, if you're in Lake Taps, right? and you are roofing in Lake Taps, you want to get into that community, um, the Lake Taps group yeah. and, mm -hmm. and track, yeah. right? You're already doing it. Because a lot of the people there are not as young, are not the next generation. They're still on Facebook. Um, they probably stalk Instagram just to watch their kids, but they're using Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depends on your demographic. Yeah. And, oh, go ahead. and run uh, comparative campaigns. So I had one, literally put almost the same content, one on Facebook, one on Instagram, for example. I had a client that they didn't see any traction on Facebook, Instagram blew up. For whatever reason, they're owned by, you know, they're owned both meta, like it, yeah. for whatever reason, Instagram worked better. Um, that's not always the case. So yeah, run, com run competitive yeah. comparisons. Yeah. If you're doing commercial, how many people are commercial roofing? Okay, commercial, LinkedIn. Yes, right. LinkedIn, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. yeah. Um, because, and don't even worry about Facebook. I yeah. Mean, but LinkedIn is where you want to go, and you sell as navigator and all the good stuff. Stock, um, it's great. Yeah. Um, I would say also if you're in a metro area, Instagram for sure, and TikTok, absolutely. Like that's where you're going to get the younger homeowners and younger demographic of people that are going to need your services. And uh, YouTube also, right? How tos on YouTube? Yeah, how tos on YouTube for sure. Like anything you post on TikTok, you can be posting to YouTube Shorts as well. It's the same pretty much kind of platform, um, and people will, will look around for that. Yeah, they say how to um, inspect my roof, how to not fall off the roof. You know, whatever how to they clean have all my these. Gutters. Yeah, how to clean mm -hmm. my gutters. Yeah. And so you, if you're there, they're going to see your name <laughs> and they're going to come back. If it's on the commercial side being that expert talking about what's going on with sustainability and solar. Just, you want to be the expert to the people out there, uh, to your customers. And do you, oh yes, go ahead. And you think that that's actually worth the time and money to actually get educational resources on places like YouTube, even though it's pointing them in a direction of doing it themselves, it's still that kind of return? Is that kind of what you guys are saying? Or are you saying also to have on YouTube when people are watching music videos or whatever, there's ads in between if they don't have the premium thing, but are you, is that something that is a good resource that has a return with educational? I, I feel like that educational piece too, because like some of the things, they're not doing their roof themselves, but they're cleaning their gutters themselves, or they're cleaning their roof themselves, or they're interested in home improvement anyway. So I think having that education around maybe those ancillary things that they're, that they're looking to do, because they're already interested in their in improving their house. So whether it's, you know, those kind of pieces that help those folks, that's gonna be 
it's hugely you know, valuable for them. Yeah, and I think just showing that you're you're a thought leader, you're an expert in that place. I think that makes a makes a big difference. And think about repurposing, right? So if you do one video that really, or two or three, whatever, you spend a day out there and you put together some how-to videos, you have so many areas where you can put them, right? They should be on your website, so when people research you, they should be on YouTube. You can do a TikTok on them. You can put them on social media. So one piece of content can go into so many different places that it's well worth your time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do not get pulled into working with a really expensive video production company. Yeah, yeah. please no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for my commercial yeah. friend back there too. Um, so one of the tactics that we love to use on the commercial side is to put together a big long checklist because facility managers a lot of times are overwhelmed but they have a lot of properties to manage. So they're like, oh I can do this myself. Well then they go online, they download your checklist and then it's like, oh holy smokes, no there's no way I can do all this. And then they call. I mean, yeah. really, it, it, you can do the same thing. I guess you could do the same thing on the homeowner side, too, is, hey, here's what it actually takes to inspect a roof. So someone goes in there with the intention of, oh, I can do this myself. I got this. And they download it, and they're like, oh, no, I don't got this. Yeah. I can't yeah. do this. And even an educational video of what to look for in a roofer, like mm -hmm. shopping yeah. around, yeah. I feel like that's what I was looking for because I'm trying to find someone to do my roof, but I don't know what's important. What are things that matter, and what are things I shouldn't, I shouldn't look at? So even, even a video saying, this is what matters when... Um, when you're looking for a roofer. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're gonna hire someone, you wanna make sure that they do this, 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 and this. And I'm sure that you know, you'll probably get hired. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're saying this is what you want, it's obviously what you're providing. Yeah. So I think that's, at least that's what I would be looking for. Yeah. Also, how to put up Christmas lights without damaging your roof. That would be a great one, especially around this time of year. And then, you, and then if you have that service, I know a lot of people do that, and someone doesn't wanna put up their Christmas lights, hey, and call this person yeah. who's telling me how to do it the right way and so they they can do it the right way so i don't have to even lift a finger I didn't even know that service existed. Yeah. I didn't know you oh, could yeah, pay someone is. to do your lights. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. but Fantastic. You're building trust before they even reach out. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing is you're building. And a lot of these marketing efforts too, don't expect to see an immediate one for one return on them. You're building trust so whenever they need you, you're there and you have all the content to show them that you're an expert and then more likely to build trust right away. And to go back to your question, thanks, you led us right into the slide. But, you know, brand reputation is critical and part of the brand reputation is being that expert, being willing to give information out and not expect anything back, right? Because it will come back around. And it does every single time. Um, being in, and you know what, we'll just start. We've talked about a lot of these things, but um, man, we got way ahead of ourselves talking about everything, <laughs> didn't we? But cause marketing or community involvement can be another way to back to your point, right? If they see you out there in the Little League and your logo's on the shirts and you're helping kids play, you know, we, there's a contractor in Texas, they had a local baseball team and some of the kids could not afford to get the uniforms. So they said, for the kids who can't afford it, we will pay for everything they do. They go to every game, they bring snacks, they do stuff. That's community involvement that's gonna make a difference. I talked to another contractor who's in the parade of his little town every year and they do it and it is like oh, yeah. huge, yeah. huge. So it, again, some of this isn't all super expensive, but it's just being involved with the brand reputation. Mm -hmm. And that's, and again, it's kind of going back to that where social media, you can really shine and just show who you are and how you're involved and you care about the community because they see that and it just makes them want to work with you. You know, it's, it really shows that you're personable and it just shows that, that connection that I, you know, I feel like I can trust you. You're obviously involved and you care and it's not just, um, you know, and they see your name all over. So I think that's where social media can really help in that case. You do a lot, right, Michelle, with, with what community service? Yeah, yeah, actually, and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun because, again, back to that authenticity point, mm -hmm. um, you get to show who you really are. You get to build really wonderful relationships. Think about associations in your community, too, that you may not already be a part of. Um, and sometimes do things because it's the right thing to do, right? If joining your chamber of commerce is the right <coughs> thing to do, do it. Join your Boys and Girls Club. Then whenever and someone does have a need for roofing, they don't have to go through the whole process of establishing if you're a trustworthy person, if you're legitimate and all that stuff. They already know you. They have a personal relationship with you. Or they know someone at your company and, they, and that person has spoke highly of your company. So it's, it's more about, it's, I mean, it's a lot of you know, lead generation, yes, but it's also just that prep work and laying the groundwork for yourself so when someone does have a need, you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So make that part of your marketing plan as you're going through there. What are we going to do to get in front of our customers in a way that's 
gives back. Mm -hmm. And I think, Megan, I'd love for you just to, from your viewpoint on the podcasting and getting on some of those podcasts and getting on social media, what, to talk to the next generation, what do you look for from companies? Like if you're looking for a company. Yeah, I have a question. Can I ask a question really yeah. quick? Sorry, before you move on the, on the community involvement. Yeah. Um, kind of the cost comparison analysis of what's actually bringing back that return. Are you seeing that Chamber of Commerce and being in networking that's like in person is kind of dying out a little bit and now it's really taking it's kind of being replaced with social media and mm -hmm. like the online presence of content marketing or are you saying that they're still both really helpful? I personally I see they're both they're both really I helpful. I mean I know I'm a digital marketer. I'm supposed to be like, yeah, paper's dead, no more, you know, whatever. <laughs> But I love, I still love doing postcard mailers. I love sending personal handwritten thank you notes. I mean, when was the last time you received or wrote a handwritten thank you note? I mean, so doing little touches like that make a big impact. Um, also, there's, uh, there's some of those groups too where you, they're like little think tank groups and people come together from totally different industries and they refer each other leads. I mean, the old adage, adage is still true that you get to know someone when you eat with them. <laughs> so take people to dinner, you know, break bread. Like it's it's still it's still a blend. And, and again, back to who you're looking to talk with and work with. Some people I know are great business people. They don't even have social media accounts. Shoot, I know one of my <laughs> roofing clients finally moved away from a fax machine and he got himself an iPad. Wow. So you know, <laughs> is he, is he going to be targeted uh, doing social media? No, that's not authentic to him and his company, and that's fine. So he's going to be more. Um, personal one-on-one -on -one. so I think a lot of it just depends on you and what you feel comfortable with and what's true to you and your authenticity I think people burn out too right yeah. they burn out on social media so if you're that's the only place you're at you kind of lost them and then they'll come back maybe six months on and come back to their social media the same thing with events right they may be really involved with their um, chamber or the county fair or whatever it may be and um, but then they burn out there too. So you really do have to kind of spread across to be where people are. Um, and I think in person, I don't care, in person is never going to go away. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say regarding the networking piece, I don't know how many of you are on Alignable. Have you heard? I don't know if, if folks have heard of that. Um, but Alignable is a great small business networking community. So it, it's similar in the way it's formatted to LinkedIn, except it's specifically for small businesses. And then they have groups that are geared towards different industries um, and different um, purposes or different goals. Mm -hmm. So Alignable is great. We, we recently you know, started working with them this last summer, and, and it's fantastic. Just for networking, if you're looking to network and get referrals with different companies, um, it's, it's, a, it's great. So if you haven't checked that out, um, you can join different community groups, and it's a great, really great support kind of networking structure, too. Did you get a book, by the way? You asked me a question. Yeah. No, okay, so here, I'm going to give you this one. So this is Perfect. called Uncopyable Sales Secrets. Um, Kay Miller, who's actually a local author here, Kay and Steve Miller, um, Kay wrote this book. She's known as the muffler mama because she was the number one North American sales person and also happened to be female. So she was like the muffler expert. She wrote this book. It came out last year. I've read it. I highly recommend it. Um, you're going to get a copy. It's autographed by Kay, too. Um, but it's a lot, it's really easy to read and it's a lot of just really practical, kind of easy sales tips um, and things that you can do. It's actually sales and marketing, in my opinion, um, to help get your foot in the door and just be unique and be distinctive and be true to yourself. And if I've missed anybody, basically if you bring up a business cards, we're going to send you all books. So anybody who brings up business cards, we've got some books, we've got some different things, we've got some promotions. So, um, and we keep talking ahead of ourselves because look, the next slide. <laughs> It's so perfect. Um, sometimes old is new. And um, really looking at what we did back in 1990, that was Yellow Pages. Eh, probably not going to go into Yellow Pages right now, but you are going to have an online directory. Um, so a lot of the stuff that seemed like 90s is now digital and online, but it's still kind of the same concept. How, where are they finding you? How are they finding you? Um, so let's start with you on some of the things, because the, the phones, <laughs> yeah, and I think when, as far as old is new, one thing that's surprising to us is radio ads, too. Mm -hmm. We've used radio ads, and they've worked really well, and it's really interesting because even though it's very old school, those work really, really well. Um, but again, with all these places that they're hearing you and you're doing all of these different approaches, again, you just have to make sure that when they call you, they're going to call, and you're going to have all this increased call volume. 
And are you going to be able to answer those calls? Because um, that's just you know the worst possible outcome. If you're you're investing all these marketing dollars, and you get all these increased leads, you get all these more all these calls, and no one's there to answer those calls. Um, it would be you know just the worst possible outcome there. So you want to make sure that you have someone to answer those calls, and in a personal way to make that connection because it's really about building that trust, making sure that you can. Um, get connected with that customer so you have that customer intake from the beginning. You can schedule those appointments with those folks um, and just to have that taken care of. So it doesn't have to be an in-house person. You can have someone to do that and to make that connection. Um, so we make sure that that happens. Anybody who comes in through your phone or through your website, we are that kind of human connection to really build that trust with those folks. Um, to be able to provide all those FAQs about what they're looking for. Again, kind of being, being that expert of, you know, what are you looking for in a roof? What are you wanting? Taking that intake, scheduling all those appointments. Um, because as you're doing all of these marketing efforts, you want to make sure that you capture all of those leads. I actually have a question. So when you did your radio marketing, mm -hmm. did you make the commercial yourself, like in-house, or did you pay for someone else to do it? Paid for somebody else to do it. Okay. Because it's one of those things you want it, I mean, you're going to be putting that out to the airwaves mm -hmm. to a lot of folks. You want to make sure that you have a good, mm -hmm. solid piece of content to share yeah, with the absolutely. masses. I think also you could do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. No, you can, absolutely. Because Especially with radio. I could do it mm -hmm. for you. And it would be it's so simple way simpler than anyone really thinks and I think it's radio is so intriguing to me because I listen to my local jazz station and I'm sure I'm like the youngest demographic that listens to it because it's just like jazz music but it's so nice and there's all these commercials on different companies that are trying to get in front of like older demographic and you never know who's gonna be listening and also there's also another one that I listen to called Indie 102.3 and that's Purely, I would say, like young people listen to that, and so I think radio is such an important. Like, I didn't really think about it until we started talking about it, and it's so important because yeah. I listen to the radio all the time because I don't have a CD player in my car, and, or Bluetooth, and so yeah, I think it's an untapped market. How many people yeah. heard the radio commercial for this show? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that. The radio station put together too. You can talk to them, and they will help put the, put that together for the you. Yeah. The commercial. Um, I hear the Ruby yeah. commercial on Sirius. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going in in the morning on Sirius, and I hear, oh, there's Ruby. I hear them. They're they're talking about their stuff. Yeah. You had a question, question too. With the radio, did you use like a spokesperson? We did have. I think our folks did the voiceover. So we were the ones talking in it, but we worked with them. So it was a local company in Portland. Um, so we worked with the agency, but we were able to just go in and they just kind of helped us create it. Um, but yeah, I was, I was going to say there's also, you know, as far as, you know, there's folks who can help you do it. You know, you can kind of get help, you can create it. You can also get assistance to do that. Um, also kind of speaking to that with, working with a virtual receptionist for instance if you're not sure how to set up the right call answering instructions you know we work with roofers all the time so we can kind of give advice on yes these are the best questions to have or like this these are some kind of great ways to answer your calls we can kind of guide you through you know how to set up call handling instructions that make sense um, and kind of give you some options of how to set that up so you know even if you know there's kind of some guidance there and um, I think there's always help even if you're wanting to create things yourself too you can kind of just reach out and there's so many people who are wanting to help small businesses too that are always there to give advice. So joining those networks too. So and you had a question, sir. Yeah, if you only have a third grade education on all this stuff, what's the good resources to go and get yourself and go in the right direction? You know, I mean, we're talking about stuff that's right. a little over my head, you know, but obviously our size company, we're, we're going in that direction. You know, just a basic outline mm -hmm. of what would work for, for us, you know, not to know all that. Right. So there's a, there's a couple things. One, you're here now. So that's your, your first step, right? So get, and get involved in your association. Get involved in RCAW because there's a lot of people on that trade show floor who are doing it. Um, Roofer's Coffee Shop, and shameless plug, but we will help connect you. Mm -hmm. So if you come in, if you, you leave your card, um, there's somebody right behind you who I would recommend talking to. And also there's a lot of people who we can kind of hook you up with and just say, yeah, this, you know, you should maybe t be talking to Alethea. You know, that's a company, depending on what you want and what you need. And you might find 
you know, what I always say is look internal first. Who is working in your company? Who is a Megan, right? Or a Michelle or a Sarah? Who is there already? Who maybe is a receptionist or is in, a, in accounting, estimating sales? It doesn't matter. Who may be interested too and be of the age where this is all natural to them, where I struggle with it every single day. Like, they have to pull me half the time. I was like, the other day they said, we're gonna do an Instagram takeover and we're gonna let somebody come in and put all kinds of stuff on our Instagram. I'm like, no way, are you kidding me? That's like the worst thing ever. And then within a week, I'm like, okay, whatever, go. It's fine, <laughs> you're, you're much smarter than I am. Um, and so I, I really recommend looking at your company, but then we can help you network too with all, all of us. All of us love, obviously, sharing our knowledge and the things we've learned along the way. So I jokingly say that the other part of my job is just connecting people. I love connecting people. I love connecting resources. So yeah, to reach yeah. out to Heidi's group and uh, to Roofer's Coffee Shop, and they'll kind of help you figure out what it is that you need and then help put you in touch with the right resources to get you there. Tracy's sitting right in front of you. She knows everybody. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of connections that, that work in there. Thank you so much. Thank Enjoy you. The show.